Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gary from Just Come to Fan TV. Back at you, another video, man. Like the content of the video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and subscribe, man. Look, 2023, man, first video of the new year. Uh, wish it was a little bit more joyous, but I want to say happy uh, new year to the Ravens flock, man. Uh, thanks to everybody who's supporting this channel. We up to like 855 subscribers, something like that. So closing in on 1,000, I want to thank y'all. You know, I just want to start off the new year by saying that. I appreciate y'all, everybody's you know, tuning into the content, man. But today, you know, we got my guy Nevin here. You know, y'all used to his face by now. Uh, we usually don't do, you know, on the recaps, but this Ravens game, we got the end of the season, man. We need to talk about this one, man. So, Nevin, man, what's going on, bro? How you feeling today, man? Happy New Year. Hey, what's going on, bro? Happy New Year to you and to all the subscribers. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I echo your sentiment. I wish it was a bit uh, more joyous. Um, I got to actually go on to work tomorrow and deal with my boss who is from Pittsburgh and is a diehard Pittsburgh fan. And after me talking trash the last time we played them and putting up posters of uh, Roquan Smith and Tyler Huntley all over the office, can only imagine what I'm about to go through tomorrow. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, jokes on me this time around. But, I mean, I hate to say classic Ravens this season, but yeah that's basically what it is to me come down right to the end of the game and everything just unravels i mean we held it together at least for the most part that game um some things of course we'll you know probably get into that should have happened prior to you know kenny pickett in that uh, touchdown pass um both offensively and defensively um but not special teams by the way because uh justice hill leaving it right there <laughs> but um but yeah so that's my initial thoughts uh what's going on in your head with this all right so initial thoughts right people are going to leave with the defense didn't come up clutch again and i've been a person to say that right when the defense needs to get that last final stop they don't get it and it's another one of those games but 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 the offense scored 13 points again bro the defense gave up nine points until the last two minutes of the football game. If my defense gives up nine points, I want my I want I expect to win the game. I expect to win the game, bro. If my defense gives up sixteen points, I expect to win the game, right? Um, I don't don't get me wrong. I know it's Raven Steelers. I know it's defensive. I get that, but this ain't about it's Raven Steelers. This is about this offense cannot score without number eight on the field. OK, and if there was any reason, if there was any hesitation, this game proved it. The, no, I don't say this game. This entire stretch proved it. When Lamar Jackson was playing, he proved it. The three years prior, he proved it. Write the blank check. All right. This write the blank check. OK. Hey, Lamar, this is your name. You feel in the, you feel in the dollar amount. And let's get it done. Let's get it done. All right. Because this team is not going anywhere without Lamar Jackson. That's this year, that's next year, and that's the year after that. So let's just get it done. Those are my initial thoughts. I know that's kind of a big picture from this, this game, but that's my initial thoughts, man. So I guess let's talk about offense and defense. Um, I guess let's, let's start with the defensive side of the ball, man. Um, anybody that stood out, anything disappointing, man? How you feel about the defense? How they performed last night? Back to your Lamar point real quick. It is interesting, though, because this entire season leading up to it, it was a Lamar has to prove his worth. Lamar has to do this and that stat wise. But now Lamar's value is seen when he's not in the game. Totally different. Totally different outlook now because we can look at the stat line all we want. But when you factor in those games that he wasn't there and what the offense really looked like without him and what life beyond Lamar would look like. Yeah, go ahead and uh, put that blank check right at that man doorstep. Let's put that GoFundMe together, fellas. Um, <laughs> um, defensively, I mean, I can't necessarily put out there one standout. I can say with full confidence, though, that I wasn't disappointed. I think we should have tightened up on the run game, but Najee Harris was having a, a stellar day. Sometimes you just deal with it. Um, but even with that, like you said, Held him to nine points with the exception of the last two minutes of the game. Um, defense did everything I feel like that they could have done. Um, you know, of course, leading up to that. And I don't, 
of course, the defensive backs, of course, that whole secondary kind of always scares me. Because when Kenny Pickett got his feet set, um, you know, I was, I got, I got a little nervous. Not like he's Peyton Manning and Tom Brady or whatever the case is, but I was like, all right, like if he's getting enough time to actually sit and read, he's going to make something because our DBs is just, you know, again, Brandon Stevens. I mean, I'm not going to hold it over you or whatever, but I mean, you know, kind of, kind of get beat. When, when certain things like that happen, especially like when the offense gets set up, um, and then when you got NBA young, oh sorry, NFL young boy uh, out there balling, you know it's, you know especially those yak yards too. Oh my gosh, that killed me. But either way, I'm rambling. But um, I don't, I didn't see anybody stand out at least from my perspective. But you know, overall, decent enough grade for us. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, I would say that if I had to pick, like if I had to pick one guy, um, I thought Chuck Clark had one of his better games this year. Um, 10 tackles, six solo tackles, a couple key breakups in coverage. Um, if I had to pick one guy, you know what I mean? That's, that's just if I had to pick someone. Um, like I, I can kind of back up the sentiment that I'm not too disappointed, right? Now, 200 yards or like 198, very close. Is disappointing, right? You never want to give that many yards rushing, right? Never want to do that. Um, I think my biggest thing is that this pass rush just wasn't getting home. And when they did get home, it was like watching every Steelers Ravens game I've ever watched growing up when Big Ben was the quarterback. We would get our hands on him, we would touch him, and he would just slide off. Now, I can't go through this with another 15 years. This is what's going to be with Kenny Pickett. I can't. I can't do it. I watched Big Ben so many times create plays to Antonio Brown, Mike Wallace, Emmanuel Sanders deep down the field because he done slipped the tackle, he done slipped somebody, and you know, extended the play. Now, Kenny Pickett is a is a good athlete. He's like I, I said this after the first game after in the recap. He's way faster than I thought he was. I'm not gonna lie to you. He's he's a good athlete. He's way he's way more uh, elusive in the pocket, but still, man. Oh, uh, Owe had a pretty good game, had some pressure, but he missed some. Um, Matty Bickett got him to the ground, but the big one of the game was obviously that last two minute drive. Jason Pierre Paul has him dead to rights, misses him. He throws a touchdown pass to Najee Harris. You know what I'm saying? That, that's just the fact of what happened, right? It is. Um, and okay, so then let's talk about Steelers wide receivers. I try not to mention George Pickens too much because Ravens fans are really sensitive about that George Pickens topic because. He was right there on the he was right there on the draft board, and we took David Ojabo, who was a healthy scratch, right um, today. So um, I get the frustration with that. George Pickens is a talented receiver, but I'm gonna say the same thing that I said before. He's not on the Ravens, so I'm not gonna dwell on what he could have been or shouldn't have been him. I, I don't I don't care. He's not on the team, right? In my personal opinion, I would have drafted George Pickens, right? He wasn't on the Ravens board because he had disciplinary issues in his past. Whatever we know. John Harbaugh in the military, good boy era. That's that's just what he wants. He doesn't he doesn't want no guy that has any kind of issue. So it is what it is, bro. So John Harbaugh is gone. You can't expect to have guys like George Pickens on this team. It just won't happen. Sorry. Um. So yeah. So I mean, but they, the receivers had a really good game. I mean, the guy who I was really impressed with. Um, he's one of the most underrated receivers in the league, in my opinion. That's Deontay Johnson. This dude is so quick and fast out of his breaks, and um, him on him on Brandon Stevens was was a mismatch. To say the least. So whenever they, the few times they got matched up, it looked like Deontay Johnson won them. You know, what I mean, he's 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 a really, really, really talented player. But uh, before we get to the real side of what we want to talk about, which is that that offense. Anything else you want to say about the defense? Will we go to the other side? No, nothing that I, I haven't already said. No, you haven't already said. I'm a uh, I'm ready for this offense talk though, because that was the headache of the night. Um, and even with Justice Hill trying to bail them out, you know, they still couldn't <laughs> still couldn't make stuff happen. All right, man. He gone. This is the second time he so we'll, we'll mention Justice Hill. Okay, say no, 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 for real. Justice Hill made what should have been the play of the game. He broke that long kick return, set the Ravens up to really take advantage of this game and really put it in on, on ice. They get down there. I mean, he gets them to the to the opposite forty. I mean, we we damn near field goal range. Ravens go three and out and got a punt. To me, that's the biggest drive of the game. That was the time to put it away, and they don't do it. Um, but 
before I get into disappointments, before I get straight it over to you now, I want to give the two guys for stand-up performers. Um, J.K. Dobbins, man, this dude is like he he's still not top speed J.K., but this dude's incredible, bro. Like like seriously, like what he's doing out there is truly incredible. Coming back from his injury in the short area quickness, he looks better than ever. Now that long speed is still he's still getting there. It's not there yet, but in that in that line of scrimmage to like ten yards, man, he look he look he's hard to bring down. He's tough. Um, so yeah, J.K. Dobbins. And then um, pretty much the only person who got thrown the ball last night, uh, Mark Andrews. So nine carries, nine, nine, nine carries, so <laughs> nine, nine targets, nine catches, 100 yards. So 100% catch rate on for Mark Andrews. Um, big time game, man. You know, he he did what he could. And uh, yeah, that's that, man. So those are the two guys I'll give out standouts, man. Um, so now, man, go do it, bro. What's what's up, man? You got any standouts? Other, oh, and you, can, you can name those guys if you want to, obviously. And then, uh, you know, give me what your thoughts about the offense last night. Definitely those two guys. Um, definitely JK and definitely Mark Andrews. It was nice to see Mark Andrews back into the offense and woven back into it. Um, especially after, you know, he was frustrated. What was it last game, a couple games ago, whatever, you know, as far as not getting the ball. Um, and I guess Mike Tomlin's high praise of Mark Andrews is kind of what sparked it all. I don't know. Just my theory. Um, but yeah, and I mean, JK, JK looked good. JK has been looking good. You know, I'm it, I kind of wish we stayed with the run a little bit more, but, you know, Steelers did start cracking down on it a little bit. I did want to see Gus get in a little bit more, too, though. Um, I know JK, had, you know, was the hot hand, but I definitely was looking for us to, you know, try to switch up personnel a little bit more to try to get things going, um, especially, again, once the Steelers started um, getting it together um, when it came to our running game, because I thought we were going to run all over them. I thought that was about to start happening, and I thought we were about to, you know, end up, you know, quote unquote, running away with the game. Um, but I mean, yeah, those are two standouts. I think Tyler Huntley. I mean, he he managed the game. Um, I'm not going to necessarily say that. Um, I'm not gonna, obviously he didn't win the game, but I'm not going to say that he was you know putting the offense on his back necessarily. I think he did what he needed to do um, to get it. I think we definitely got that uh, lucky break with the Cam Hayward uh, penalty. Um, but I mean, he capitalized on it at the end of the day, so that much I at least can be proud of. Um, obviously, the interception was just ugly, it wasn't even like a tip ball, it was nothing. I mean, it was a misread, honestly. He didn't anticipate, or he should have known the route. I don't know if he just in the moment just forgot the route and threw it where the receiver was and went not where he was supposed to be. I was, I'm just trying to piece it all together. But that was one of uh, Mick Fitzpatrick's easier interceptions, um, especially to close out a robbery like this and keep their playoffs hope, playoff hopes alive. Um, but I'm glad to see Isaiah Likely kind of, you know, getting a little a little bit of shine. Um, and it, you know, I just was also kind of curious about our receivers, though, because, I mean, it didn't seem like anybody even existed, really. Um, when it came to our receivers, it was really just our Mark Andrews show with Isaiah Likely, you know, being being the backup when it came to uh, when it came to the receiving uh, situation. So, again, you know, wish we won. Clearly, we have some issues on offense, um, and even like you said, the setup after Justice Hill, that was that was it for me. Once I saw that, and I hate to even be pessimistic, I was like, that's the game. So ain't no way we're going to be able to, you know, drive the ball <laughs> down like that to try to, uh, to try to score again. You know, we have this perfect field position. We got to get what? How many yards and be in field goal, field goal range? It's like, it's not that hard. Granted, I'm not, I'm tired of settling for field goals, but you at that point in the game where it's like, yo, just get points. So I, when I saw that slow down, it was kind of it for me. And that, scares me for for next week and for real for the playoffs you know after that so yeah what's your thoughts um well the thought on what you said at the end if lamar doesn't play the next game the ravens are winning it so they're not being the bank for tyler not 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 like that no offense so i would say this about tyler Huntley, right he i think he played his best game so far this year right i i, I really did i thought he he threw the ball pretty well, you know, ish for him. And um, 
you know, I, I thought he was okay. For what, what, what he's actually doing in this offense, I thought he was okay. I think he had his best pet game throwing the football, right? Um, that last that last interception, I honestly I don't even care. Uh, because when the Ravens got the ball with 55 seconds and no timeouts, I didn't have much hope for them getting anything going, honestly. Um, now I will say this: He made a, the Cardinal sin of throwing, like like you see, you, you described it perfectly. He threw it where Deshaun, I think it was Deshaun Jackson. He was talking, I'm pretty sure it was. He threw it where Deshaun Jackson was instead of where Deshaun Jackson was going. Now, if he leaves Deshaun Jackson, maybe it's different. But he threw it to like Deshaun Jackson had stopped and stood still, and it was three spillers all around him. When Deshaun Jackson's clearly running to the sideline, so I think that was the big mistake on that last second throw, bro. He just he got to lead him. You can't you can't just throw a static. But what I want to say about this offense is for a team to be have their whole identity, the Ravens have a false identity, bro. They just do. For your for your identity to be a power run football team, why can we never close out the game running the football? Like this is the identity of the team, right? This is the reason we got. Seven tight ends, right? You get everybody on the field, you run the football. But when it seems like time and time again, when they come out to run the ball at the end of the game, they get stuffed. Now, you made some, made a good point about Gus Edwards, right? Now, I, I would love to see Gus more. So, officially, Gus had three carries with two yards. That's what Gus had, all right? So, no action for Gus virtually. But I will say this. It looked like, not looked like, J.K. was the hot hand. So, I'm not going to get on him too much for riding the hot hand. Um, I think this might be the JK's first ever game with more than 15 carries. He had 17 carries in this game, and honestly, he probably should have had 22-ish, 25-ish, honestly, the way, way he was rolling. Um, but with that being said, this offense is stuck in the 1950s. Um, it's, it's, it's boring to watch. It's painful to watch. Um, at times, it's like you make it so easy for the defense to stop you. Put everybody in the middle of the field. You got one wide receiver. You got three tight ends. So everybody's at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they run the ball in succession sometimes, but they never spread the field to run. You know, sometimes, you know, Greg Roman, you know what you could do? You could put four receivers out there on the field and still run the football. That, that, that's not illegal. You know, you, you can do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can spread the field out to run the football. Um, so it just feels like you know when the Ravens are going to run. You know when they're going to pass. Just look at the formations and look how they set up. And if I can tell that, I know the defense uh, who got leaders and coaches and all kinds of stuff who've been studying these guys. I know they can see that too. So um, yeah, man, that's that, that's that, that's my thoughts on this Ravens offense. That it's um, it's boring, it's predictable, um, and you know it's just I don't feel like they use the guys enough to get anything out of them. You could say we lack receivers, and I'm not going to say you're wrong. But when are the receivers going to get a chance to be out there and really run routes? You know, we're the only team that says, yeah, if you want to be us, be with us, the first thing you need to do is learn how to block. Like, come on, man. Like, let's, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's this is an old approach. But anyway, I don't want to go on too long, bro. What's your thoughts about the offense, man? So, Greg Roman, a little bit earlier today, I um, was helping my cousin out. Um, and I printed off an application to uh, Taco Bell. Um, and let me know if you need a copy of that application. And I'll, uh, by all means, I'll be a reference and everything like that. You might be a little bit better at that job um, than you are offense coordinator. By the way, shout out to all the Taco Bell workers that have helped me over the years. <laughs> um, but yeah, Greg, um, we've been done with you and all of your offensive quote unquote schemes. It's been time for you to go um and i i thought i mean i was trying to look at it from another perspective i was okay well you know we get tyler huntley in because i remember from last season i think that he did a decent enough job managing tyler huntley last year um and i say that because and i have this this theory um that i've been saying uh saying since last season i think that when tyler huntley's in they actually coach tyler huntley I think with Lamar, it's kind of like, yeah, you put a play out there, but, you know, Lamar, do what you do. You know, make make something happen. So, you know, going into it with this year, obviously not wanting Lamar to be out for, what, four games. But seeing Tyler Huntley come in, I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, maybe he's going to be coached up. You know, some things are going to, you know, kind of kind of get fixed. And like you were saying, it's just predictable. Everything is just predictable. I mean, we can already expect wide receivers to not be in the mix at all. Mike Tomlin pretty much called it. 
I mean, yeah, Mark Andrews is a problem. That was it. <laughs> no wide receiver. I don't even know if he uh, had, if he knew that we had receivers or not. Um, but if so, he gave them zero acknowledgement. And I think that's just the, how the league is looking at it, too. It's just like, yeah, y'all got people. But it's Mark Andrews, it's running the ball. And, you know, J.K. should have gotten more touches. And, again, I like you said, like, you know, Gus didn't have the hot hand. So it didn't necessarily need to feed him. But, again, that's just me looking at, like, the short down yardage situations and me knowing like okay well Gus typically punches it in I mean I know it was a kind of a tough game up front um especially uh coming down the stretch but you know I was looking for a little bit more of that but I mean JK put the team on his back and did everything that he possibly could and I mean I have I have no complaints when it comes to that I just I don't I don't know I'm I'm still kind of nervous about even if Lamar well sorry when Lamar comes back How's this all really going to look? Is this just going to be the same exact thing, you know, that's going on now, except we might score one more touchdown rushing? And that's just not going to get us anywhere in the playoffs. We had all these high hopes. And while, yeah, some injuries have, you know, kind of held us back from a couple wins here and there, we had some major meltdowns. And we, we're not, we're not going, we're not going to make it. And I hate to say that. I'm tearing up on the inside just thinking about the fact that this is yet another season of having such high hopes and we might get one playoff win. Maybe. So that's my uh, overarching feel. Yeah. Um, the, the, the Ravens had multiple times to to really take a step forward and change. They could have fired great Roman at the 2020. I've said this all the time on this channel. They could have did it before this season. Hell, they could have did it this season, um, like week 10, 11, you know what I mean? But now at this point, obviously, we're coming into the last week of the season, so it is, it is what it is, honestly. Um, and I think you made a good point about them coaching Tyler Huntley differently. I've said that, too. I think that when Tyler Huntley is in the people, so they run a different offense for Tyler Huntley. But what I think it is, Greg Roman is already simple, but he runs a simpler offense. And then with Lamar, I think he tried to do too much. That's why people say, oh, Lamar is always looking deep because... Greg Roman calls more deep shots with Lamar in the game because Lamar has the arm talent to get it down the field. That's not really Todd Huntley's bag. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely agree with that point. Um, and it just feels like a wasted season, bro. It just feels like a wasted year. Um, the Ravens could have did something different. They could have did more. Uh, but listen, I'm not going to say it's super over and done with, right? Because I, 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 I am a firm believer that if you have Lamar Jackson, you have a chance. I, I do believe that, right? Now, how much of a chance... I don't know. All right. <laughs> they, they, they put up this, this graphic last night that the Ravens averaged uh, 28 points a game with Lamar Jackson at quarterback. And it's like the second highest ever in the NFL for like one quarterback. And like, I think it's around, it's it's definitely below 20 without him. It's like around, I think, like 18 or something like that. It's definitely below 20 without him. So, um, you know, it's about Lamar coming back, bro. That's, that, that's really what it's about. Um, so with this team, with Greg Roman, um, I, I honestly, I don't even know what to say at this point, bro. Uh, I'm just disappointed in the loss. Um, the Steelers came in here, came to Baltimore, came to M&T Bank Stadium, and and and, and beat us out in the stadium, bro, and, at the bank. Uh, last second, and it's just disappointing, though. It, like it's just honestly all the way around disappointing. Um, but you know, the Ravens, if the if the Bills win tonight, the Ravens still have a shot to win the, the AFC North next week. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. But uh, now, what's your final thoughts on this game before we get out of here? My final thoughts is that I hope that a loss like this, you know, with it being such a close game and a winnable game, my final thought is that I'm hoping that this brings out something, some type of fire in the team, some type of something, you know, going, you know, against Cincy next week. And then also just the playoffs after that. I'm just hoping that we can figure something out <laughs> anything honestly um because we have so many we had so many winnable games all season didn't even we weren't even getting blown out it was just dumb stuff and i'm like okay these i kept saying all season you know this is fixable this is fixable this is fixable and then you hit a point of maybe it's not maybe this is just us and this is just it and last night definitely brought that to light so I'm hoping that, you know, 
maybe, you know, of course, Lamar coming back, things change, but just overall the heart of the team. And, you know, I'm trying to take Greg Roman. Hopefully this sparks something, but nothing has sparked anything in this man whatsoever. Um, but if, again, if he wants that application, it's already printed out. Write myself down as a reference. You know, go ahead. Um, but that's 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 really my biggest thought. I'm just hoping that we do something now, like right now. Yeah, and I'm looking back through the season schedule, and when I look through these games and these losses, it only to me. This is just my personal opinion. The it only for the Ravens should have lost one game, honestly. Should have not saying that you know yeah you look you lose what you lose what you lose you know what I mean ain't no more big as nothing like that but to me it feels like that 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 Browns game at thirteen to three where we felt like we had nothing going that felt like a real loss but besides that the Ravens were either leading winning or flat out dominating the game and blowing the lead in every other game pretty much this year and uh, that's got to come down to coaching so I want to say one last thing too about Greg Roman right. Last year, Greg Roman, you opened up the offense, bro. You went 55% pass, 45% run, and the Ravens had really one of their most exciting offenses, best, not going to say best offense, I'm going to say, I ain't going to go that far, but early on in the season last year, Lamar was throwing deep balls to Hollywood, Bateman was in, in the mix, Holly, uh, Sammy Watts had a couple of good games, Mark Andrews was still doing his thing. Uh, then when Todd Huntley come in, you had the same thing. That's why Todd Huntley had better passing yards last year, right? The offense was more spread out, it was more open. This year, I don't know why you decide to go back to your caveman offense. I don't know why. Why did you do it? Last year, last year the Ravens had. Last year, the Ravens got up to 13th in passing, and that's by far the highest Greg Roman has ever finished in passing. By far, he's usually 27 and below. So why why go away from that? And um, but he did, and that's where we are. You know, uh, the Ravens are hoping that they can run the ball and play defense in the playoffs. And it may work, it may not. But that's our thoughts on this game, man. Give me your final thoughts in this comments, man. You know, disappointing loss, but the Ravens still have the playoffs. They still have possibly the AFC North to play for. So we'll see what happens with that, man. Um, but you know, it's not in this game, man. It's just another fan TV. We out.